Last time on the Monster Hobbies model car garage, but the real ones actually had a little bit of a tread into the slick, and they look like this. And there it is. We now have the proper panel line in the back there, going up into the trunk. Here we have the Ford chrome bumpers, both front and rear. And you can see that I added in the headlight covers and the mesh grille. Uh, builder discretion is advised. Here's a little unpainted mock-up of the car. And now, on to the show. Here I've got the interior tub and the stock seats, the rear bench and the two buckets. And one thing that I noticed with the buckets is that the back panel glues on and there is a bit of a gap up and around and around the headrest and back down here again. So I do believe that just filling this with some putty and sanding it smooth will correct that. But one of the major problems we have here currently is that the bench seat doesn't really want to fit in here. It's tight up against the sides, and I do believe the back is a little bit high. So what I'm thinking is just sanding and reshaping the edges until this fits in properly. And I have the monogram uh, Torino Talladega, and uh, you can see that the bench seat is at the same level as the package shelf. So I don't know if that's totally correct for our car here, our AMT Torino, but I am going to try to get that seat more or less where it should be. And I do, do believe that the back of the seat will sit something like this on the back of the package uh, tray in here. But again, it just doesn't want to go down. There's two ideas I have. One, of course, is the easy way to sand the edges till it does fit. And if it's too high, I might just take the knife and drag it across here and separate the seat into two pieces and then have the bottom section come out a little bit ahead and slot the top down. So sort of like this, if you know what I mean, if it, this ends up being too high. So we'll just try that. It didn't take very long to sand down the sides of this bench seat in order to get it to drop right in, and it did so really wonderfully. And as you remember, the back was really upright. So in order to correct that, what I did is I took my fingers just like this with uh, these fingers into the seat back and my thumbs here, and I just carefully bent it back a little bit until this was in the right position with the right back slope. And you can see the stress line up along the plastic here is quite lighter than the other uh, plastic, almost like a white stress line. But that stress line, when we take our seat and we line up the front to the box here where it's going to be mounted in the real car, you can see that the back of the bench seat is now right up tight against the package shelf. And that makes it look very much like our monogram Torino, where you can see the package shelf and the seat meet. But I actually like this a little better because there is a little bit of a roll up here, which makes it look more authentic to the car, at least in my opinion. So we'll move our monogram out of the way. We won't need it anymore. That was just to uh, sort of get the general idea of what this should be looking like. So now we're all back to AMT and like I said, this was quite easy. It only took a minute or two. Just sand down the edges and then pry open the seat. So I noticed another little issue with the dashboard and it's right here. There's like a ridge that's right on the edge. Now, I don't know if this is in your kit or not, but looking at real pictures of that dashboard, we have to get this ridge out of here. So again, that's just a scraping with your hobby knife and maybe a file or something, but just flatten that out and make it nice and smooth on the edges. I was getting ready to paint the chassis pan when I noticed something interesting about the rear axle here. This morning I was reading my Muscle Cars of the 60s book when I noticed something really interesting about the 1969 Ford Fairlane Cobra. On page 51 and 52 it says, the Cobras also included as standard a competition suspension with staggered rear shocks. Now the model kit here is molded with shocks on the front ends. One of these should be on here at the back and the other one be at the front. 
I'm not sure which is which, but in any case, you can't fix this because it's molded right into that rear axle. The only way to actually fix it is to use a different back end. But in this kit, this is what they give you. So this is the standard Ford Fairlane style of underbody. Actually, there is something you could do, and it wouldn't really be accurate to the car, but it would help with the NASCAR race version if you want, is to get two more shocks and glue them back here. So then you would have four shocks on each corner of the rear axle, which would really improve the suspension on the race car version. Maybe not accurate as the staggered shocks, but still something, and you wouldn't have to try to dig these out and rebuild something really weird back here. Another thing that is incorrect in this kit is the actual Ram Air air cleaner unit. So here we have a picture of the real engine in the Cobra, and you'll notice it on the bottom part of the air cleaner, this is the standard Ford air cleaner with the snorkel sticking out the side for air, but on the top is the special Ram Air part of the air cleaner. So you have the rubber seal to mount it in on top of the hood, and then you have the door, the trap door that opens up with the solenoid, and that allows the air to come in, under uh, extreme speed of course. But down below is the standard Ford air cleaner. So basically, you got the special top in here with the rubber seal, and then your paper air filter, which would be down inside, and then the housing, which includes a snorkel. Now, if you look at the AMT part, you'll notice that the snorkel is missing, that this is a completely round filter. So this is basically like a hot rodder's filter, which would have the open paper element down below, which again is not correct. We need that snorkel. So sourcing it out of, I think it's the 69 AMT Mercury Cougar, I do believe that one has the proper air cleaner in it. Now, if you're one of those model builders that bought the kit that has that Torino rear bumper in it with the egg crate grill, this is how the air cleaner is supposed to look, which is, again, the standard Ford air cleaner without the Ram Air option. So it's got the chrome-plated top with those, you know, indentations all the way around, but still the snorkel. So this is, again, a better view of the snorkel in the air cleaner, with a couple of the pipes coming off it, but that is what you should have if you don't have the Cobra kit. And this part is completely absent in the entire model. And our air cleaner problems actually just don't end right there with the stock version. It carries on into the NASCAR. So here I'm showing you the Street Machine version just for a moment, and you'll notice that we've got the dual quad intake manifold down here with the two carburetors. And then we get our choice of the velocity stacks, but that's not where we're looking at here. We're looking at the dual quad air cleaner. Now, there's no problem with that. Here it is here on the parts tree in chrome, and it would have that paper element exposed down below. In fact, it's even molded that way with the ridges, as you can see there. Uh, get rid of those mold marks, because uh, your carburetor's gonna fit on there and they need to fit nice and flat. So number 16 hobby blade. So that's not the problem. The problem is with the NASCAR, and this is the issue. So they have this part right in here, where it says to use the intake manifold with the single barrel carburetor. Now that's how NASCAR actually ran. The issue is this. The NASCAR air cleaner they're calling out for is the complete wrong design. If you notice, it has these two bumps right here. Guess what those two bumps are? Therefore, dual quads. And if you take a look at the chrome dual quad air filter, which was right, you'll notice that the NASCAR filter, here, yeah, this is a better way to notice, <laughs> you'll notice that it is the exact same size and the carburetors line up perfectly. So you are going to need the dual carburetor intake manifold from the street machine version of the engine. But the issue is NASCAR never ran with dual quads. NASCAR ran with single carburetors. So this air cleaner is completely wrong and the one you need for the NASCAR looks like this. So again AMT has screwed this part up and basically what you need is you need 
one air filter here and then at this part completely gone and the widened out portion with this back end is correct but it would need to be pushed down here you know what i mean like moved in this way with this top of the air cleaner gone with this half circle ridge coming here so basically what you would need to do and it wouldn't even be a good way to do it uh, is to saw this right in half right here saw this right in half right there get rid of the middle section and move that you know pinch it together so that this is one air cleaner and then you get that half circle ridge but this would be the issue because you're cutting that angle here off and then abruptly attaching it here so again this this is just wrong so if you're going to build this as the oval track car i can't even call it nascar anymore you would need the dual intake manifold with those dual carbs it wouldn't be right at all for anything but it would look correct under the hood and when someone opens it up it wouldn't just have a single barrel carburetor because the only way to make this work is to have the carburetor sitting right there which would be right in the middle the single carburetor so it wouldn't be right so just use the dual intake manifold don't put nascar on this thing at all just make it up make up your own numbers or something and make it for your own little oval track race because the moment you open the hood it's automatically incorrect here's another little idea for this now this is on my nascar version of the car or i guess it's a race car now but you can see i left the door handles in place on a real race car these would be removed but before I remove them, I noticed that on some of the NASCARs, they actually have a blank over panel on the door handles. When they remove it, of course, there's going to be a hole there with a lock and everything. So they put a metal plate over the top and just sort of riveted it in or something like that. And uh, that's what I want to duplicate here. Now, what I did is use my number 16 hobby blade and I etched across the top of the door handle, went down here, and then made a diagonal line across here, and then rounded the corner up there. So when I take my knife and remove the door handle, if I've done this deeply enough, there should be a, like a triangular pattern underneath the door handle. And that would be the blank out plate, so then I could just paint that aluminum with the uh, paintbrush once I get the body painted. Here it is with just the door handle cut off. Now I did cut it down, you can see from the top profile, it's not sticking out like it was a minute ago. And you can see the etched in pattern. So what I'll do is further sand this out and then we'll really see what it looks like. Here we have the car with the door handles removed and you can see the dust around here. I just sanded the door down wanted to leave the dust in so you could see how that ended up looking. Again, it's quite nice. So what I'll do is just take my toothbrush, scrub in here with some soapy water and clean that body. And that'll get all the dust out of here and leave the panel line. Here we have the chassis and the interior and I added on some testers, semi-gloss black. I'm going to paint flat black here on the carpet and aluminum right in the console there. But before I do that, the reason why I'm showing you this right now I was going to actually wait till the end of the video and then show you the painted model because pretty much it's all ready to go. But the reason why I'm showing you this is because I did a little more research on the AMT Torino kit and I discovered something really interesting. This model kit is actually a restoration. And my good friend Pete in England was telling me that uh, he noticed that the doors here were very basic the window cranks and the uh, handles to get out of the car and all that stuff are not in here. It's just a very light armrest. And if you remember underneath, I said that this was shifted over, almost like they spliced it right in here and put a different back end on. Well, I discovered something. This model kit is actually a restoration effort by AMT because when they made that modified stalker kit in 1971, I believe it was, 
and they put on the bigger tires and everything. They redid the interior as a race version and they cut out the original armrests and everything that were in the kit. And then they did something to the chassis because my uh, research was telling me that AMT removed the molded in exhaust from the chassis from the 1969 kit and wiped the door panel details from the interior bucket. So that's that mystery now solved. And the reason why this looks like it shifted over because when AMT did the restoration, instead of molding the exhaust back in here, they just did the separate exhaust so that you could add those in. And that's why this is so weird as a model, why the wheels are not in the right locations and your door panels are very smooth there, Pete. So that means that AMT had to actually restore that model kit from the 1971 Stalker edition. So given that into consideration that they had to go through those hurdles to get this thing back to what a real Torino looks like, I think they did a pretty decent job because we don't know how badly these were altered in the molds in order to make that crazy Stalker. But here it is now. And I think it's all right, even though they could have done the staggered shocks or done this a bit differently. We now have an answer as to why it is as it is. So now that I've discovered that the NASCAR engine is wrong and I'm going to use the dual carb intake manifold, I'm going to have to actually sand the engine flat on these surfaces, getting rid of those uh, little locator pins, like my uncle used to say. Always get rid of the locator pins. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to sand those off and then I can glue the engine and maneuver it into the right location because, again, this has got a bit of a step right in there and probably up and down this way. So here's to my uncle. <laughs> my uncle uh, took a test back in the 50s and he was one of the top five smartest people in all of Canada. So passing this down from the top five smartest person in Canada <laughs> on to our little viewing audience. So yes, I was a little incorrect. There is some issues with the engine, but this is nothing too major. Okay, so again, cross sand like that. Now, got free rain on the two engine blocks halves. So with my liquid glue in there, I can maneuver this into shape and get it nice and even. Thus uh, reducing down that seam line that's running around here, making it easier to clean off. And while we're at it with the sanding block, the other thing to do is just take it like this and true up the locations of the cylinder heads on the block. That'll make it nice and even, thus reducing some of that gap on those cylinder heads once you glue it into place. Hey, remember when I said there was an axle that went right through the engine block? Well, take a look at this oval hole right in here, and you can see the evidence of where it used to be. And it's on both sides of the engine block on the inside. So again, there's part of that 1968 mold making a comeback. So another weird thing with the engine is the cylinder heads themselves. You can see these little indentations in the top of the engine block that are supposed to have pins on the cylinder heads, but they're not there. But what it shows in the instructions is that they glue on like this with the open part sitting upward. So again, it does look weird, but that's the way that AMT is saying to do it. And the other thing, if you notice, this is all sort of dished in and whatever. So again, take your sandpaper and just go over the top, cross sanding that. And same with on there. Then glue it in, it should all be nice and flat. Then you're going to have to, a little later on, once it's dry, take your sandpaper and go across this edge here, and then a file, and just go across those little holes, because that's where the exhaust manifold is going to sit on, and you need that to be flat as well. On the back of the timing chain cover, you'll notice two little mold marks here and here. Not the pin, though. But here and here, and you will have to file those flat. 
or get rid of them somehow in order for this to fit nice and flush on the front of the engine. Just like that. I removed the locator pin on the top of the engine and then I took my sandpaper block and cross sanded until I got the top of the engine nice and flat as you can see there. Then I took my intake manifold and here I sanded the tops of where the carburetors are going to mount. And I was going to go across like this, but that's wrong because these are actually stepped. So you want to just flatten out one at a time, like that. Then I took, took it and sanded it like this. And I took my hobby knife, my number 16 blade, and just cleaned the chrome off of here because these are going to all be contact surfaces. So now this is all nice and loose, but what you want to do is line it up so that the front is nice and tight up in here and level with the back. Oh, remember on the uh, timing chain cover there was a little pin on the back and I said not to remove it? You actually do have to remove it because it will sit too high up in here and not come to the top of the oil pan. So by cutting it off, I was able to push this down until it got to the top of the oil pan. I had to open up this little half semicircle just a little bit in order to get this into the bottom of the oil pan. Although there is still just a little gap, but I think that's okay. We can always pretend there's a gasket in there. But look at how high this uh, high raise intake manifold is. It's pretty crazy. Now, because we sanded down the top of our cylinder heads, and these will go up like this. The nice part is all this will fit nice and flush to the front of the engine as well as to the bottom piece of the intake manifold. So I'll glue this into place and when I paint the engine I'll just have to be careful not to hit this. Although I do want to uh, use a little black wash on this chrome just to dull it down a little bit make it look more, you know, like aluminum or something like that. So I noticed something on this big chrome intake manifold that I didn't notice when I started to glue this together, so I had to pull it off in a hurry. But on the bottom here, just underneath this part of the intake manifold, there is a little ridge. And if you can see it on your part, it comes up at an angle and then hangs over. So it's like angle and then a hangover like that. You don't want the hangover there because it actually interferes with the cylinder heads. So just take your sanding block and level this off to the bottom slope. And then when you do that, your cylinder heads will fit nice and tight like there on the engine. So that was something I had to do in the last minute. And then I noticed something else here. Once you get it together, your valve cover will uh, need to sit down nice and flat on here. And the issue is on this side, if I get it on there and you can look, there is a gap. So again, once this is glued up nice and solid, you will have to sand from the bottom until this whole surface here is level. So basically something like this, and you keep going. Get that all nice and level, and then your valve cover is going to sit down nice and flat. And remember to get rid of the chrome on those contact surfaces where you're going to put the glue. So there and here, and you can just glue that on nicely. And speaking of getting a good fit, here we have the oil pan cooler. And you'll notice there is a mold mark right in the dead center. So if you're going to put this on, not sure which direction we we're going here just yet, but you will need to get rid of that with your number 16 hobby blade, make it nice and flat, get all the chrome out of there, and remember to uh, get the chrome off the bottom of the oil pan right there. So when you put this together, it is nice and flat. Again, lots to uh, get rid of and take care of, but once it's all together, this thing will look really, really good. Here's our engine with the valve covers glued on, and they do sort of have a curve in them, they're supposed to end up sticking straight up. The left hand side has the little tiny filler on here. It's a little pin that sticks up. It's uh, supposed to be an oil breather or something to that effect. 
and the right hand side is smooth. Now what I've done is I've glued one of the carburetors on and I just want to show you the carburetor. So again I had to sand off any of the pins, the locator pins that were on here, and file that flat because this is actually sort of shifted just a bit like that, even though it's chrome plated. And the other thing I did was I figured out where the carburetors were going to touch because they are very big and uh, it was right in the front for the one in the back. So again with the sanding block I just sanded that flat and then for this carburetor I sanded the back of it I guess. Okay so the one in the back you sand the front and the one in front you sand the back and then they should fit tightly together you know, butted this way. And they do step down, so that's going to be interesting with the air cleaner. According to the instructions, this circle is supposed to be on that left-hand side, and the little detail like the automatic choke and whatnot is supposed to be on the right-hand side. So that's the way I've done it, so all I have to do is just add a little glue, and then glue that carburetor into place. The whole reason why I glued the carburetors on the engine is to test out this air cleaner. And once we get it on there, you can see that it does line up with the top of the carburetors, those little uh, round tops. Again, this does look pretty nice once you get it all sorted out and together. Should be good. And there's enough to uh, slop this around a little bit to make this hit the back of the firewall up here, wherever that comes into play, in order to make this accurate to the NASCAR air cleaners that they used. Although this is, like I said, a dual carb setup, which would not be NASCAR legal. In fact, something like this would really be killing all the other cars out there if you had two four barrels sitting on there. That's basically one jet per cylinder. So again, something that NASCAR didn't approve of, but boy, this would sure make that uh, that wicked tornado fly fast. Now the only thing missing is our oil filter but that we can glue on because it is included in the kit, as well as that cooler that's down below on the bottom of the oil pan. We have another issue with the model kit, and that is in the fit and finish department once again. And our issue is the hood. Now, the hood needs to sit flat in all four corners and look correct. And the issue that we have is with those big, tall carburetors with this intake manifold for the NASCAR version. And the way that I solve this is I just have this all dry fit and I've got the frame pinched up, you know, where it's supposed to be underneath. And the engine is just sitting here loose, as you can tell, just like that. So what I had to do is just test fit this all loose a few times. And I had to take my sanding block and just go across the top of these two carburetors, whoops, top of the two carburetors, and get this as flat as I could, almost having the bases being paper thin. And uh, I could try it just a little bit more, but I'm starting to see some light around the edges here, so I don't want to take it too far because I don't want to lose the roundness of this. The other thing I could do is just with the number 16 hobby blade, scrape this down a little bit. I don't want to get too deep because as you can see with these stress marks I'm already cutting through a little bit when I took away the uh, mold marks under here. The second thing that I could do, now you are going to have to sand these down paper thin so there's no getting away from that, but just to give it more relief I could also scrape this uh, rectangle a little bit more, being careful not to scrape through the top of the hood It'll be dicey, I know, but uh, we can get this to sit pretty flat if we can do the combination of these three things. If you like this show so far, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And now, back to the show. Here we have the factory stock engine, and I still have to glue on some of the pieces. But what I wanted to show here was the carburetor, and again I had to sand the top down. But because this isn't such a high-rise intake manifold, it should be okay to clear under the hood. There's the uh, starter motor on there as well. 
And the other thing I had to do was get rid of the mold mark on the bottom of the air cleaner. And like I was saying before, this Ram Air air cleaner is not really that accurate. It's a chrome plated unit, which should be painted Ford blue. What I was thinking on this though, is you could buy an O-ring from the hardware store that was the same diameter as the top of the air cleaner. And with some crazy glue, just make a little bead on there and drop the O-ring on. And that would replicate the O-ring on the real car, which will seal up against the bottom of the hood. Just make sure you don't get such a tall O-ring that when you close the hood, it's going to lift it up. I will paint the bottom of the air cleaner with some semi-gloss black or even flat black and leave the center just exposed plastic and put a drop of glue on the center and then stick that onto the top of the carburetor. Here's our Cobra engine after it's all glued together and you can see how I treated the Ram Air air cleaner. This is how I find it on the internet. So it's blue along the bottom of the housing and then black on the top. This one does have the high intake manifold in it, but I was building this engine as the NASCAR before I realized that the <laughs> carburetor setup was wrong with the air cleaner. Overall though, this engine did go together quite nicely. There is really only mold marks, as mentioned before, that is holding this thing up. But uh, the exhaust manifolds, they come in nice. They sit on the flat part, so you can actually get rid of the paint underneath and get that nice plastic to plastic contact. Painted the carburetor with some gold in there. Sort of hard to see from this angle. There we go. And that is how it appears. So then I also have the high performance engine. And this is how the quote-unquote NASCAR one should be, except without the dual carbs. There's the uh, high-speed manifolds coming out. Then you've got your oil sump right there. It is a sump, not a filter thing. There's the oil filter. I painted it orange to look like Fram, whereas on the stock engine I painted it white to look like the Ford uh, oil filter. I left a little bit unpainted here, and that's where it's going to glue onto the bar. There's the dual carbs, also painted gold. I did not put the black wash in here. After all, I kind of changed my mind on it, but you can put that in. And I did use Molotol Chrome Pen just to uh, get some chrome underneath where I scraped off. But again, overall, these look quite nice. It looks pretty much like the exhaust manifolds are heading in the same direction underneath. So again, quite nice. The only uh, pieces that are missing is the alternator bracket. But I did try to mount the alternator the way I thought it would be, with the little bars going up and down. Oh, and on your distributor there is a little button. That button goes to the front of the motor, so don't uh, smooth that off when you clean it all up. The other thing is these little spouts here, I think they're supposed to be a pin for the oil breathers. There is something that looks like an oil breather cap, but they give you two on the parts trees for a total of four if you're building two kits. And I'm not sure if that's really what they are. The instructions say nothing on them. So there is a little sunken hole in the bottom that could go there, but there really should be a breather back here as well on the valve cover, so I don't know if you want to use them, go ahead. But uh, I'm sort of leaving mine off, I guess. Overall, I, I, it's hard to know if anyone will notice that, but again, it's all up to you how you want to build your engines. I was going to glue the engine into the chassis, but then I thought, hey, wait a minute, before I do that, it might be hard, once the engine is glued in here, to get those little front axle pins inside the car. So. I was going to push them through, and then I realized they don't want to go through from the inside to the outside. They will kind of stick in a little bit. So then I thought, okay, well, these holes have to be opened up. And I was able to find a 3 seconds drill. That's a 3 seconds inch. And that seemed to go through pretty well. And here I have the other chassis, which I did that in. And now you can see that the axle pin does fit right up in tight. Also, you can get it from behind. Somehow. <laughs> oh, fell over. You can get it in from behind. 
and uh, get it through there. There we go. But it is a little bit short on this end to go deeply into the wheel, which is what it needed. It can still get uh, put in place, but you will need to put a bit of glue on there and then hold the wheels accurate because they want to flop a little bit, flop a little bit on that pin. So you want to get it in nice and uh, let it set and you should be on your way. But yes, you will need a 3 seconds inch drill to get into that hole and open it up. Next week on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Here's a list of all the NASCAR race drivers and the cars they drove, as well as the numbers for 1969. The stock interior is looking really wonderful. Just got to add in the seats and the gear shift lever. The issue I'm going to have is trying to get that wheel alignment with the wheels in because I can't see where it goes to uh, get in that A-frame housing. These could work really well on a bright yellow, maybe a beige body, maybe even white or cream or even a light gray. But I don't know what color I'm going to use. The stance looks correct on our 69 Cobra, but what about our NASCAR Torino? Next time, I'm going to pick an easier kit to do. Maybe this one. <laughs>